let's take what I did this morning. So I had, I put Sam on with Patrick to begin with and um, Chris on with the much the less player. He would lose 3-0. He's good, but he would, he, he'd lose 3-0 too. They're all professionals. He's, he, he coaches, and, but he's got a job and so on. So Chris, first of all, played above the cut line. He, every shot he played had to be higher than the line on the wall or deeper than the line on the floor. So I'm now restricting Chris's opportunities, but it's all very valid. He's using height. He has to have it controlled because otherwise it's too easy for the other guy. And Dom Dominic can now do anything. So off this difficult condition, which is good for Chris, Dominic can play any shot. No problem with that. Then we went on to Chris playing only straight. So whichever side of the court he on, he's on, he has to take, he can play drops or any variety, but it has to go straight. So Dominic can be in line early again. Right, then I made it slightly more difficult for Dominic by giving Chris angles, that's off the side wall onto the front wall or the back wall, or cross courts, which gives Chris more, more opportunities now and promotes him to attack and differences. But still, Dominic can cope with that. I use a bubble deeper to warm up as well. They get a bit of time, stroke, relax, and then ready to you know build on that. So from there, then I go, the front player plays this, continues to play above or deeper, but the receiver can do anything. So now you're putting a bit more pressure on the, the serve, server. And then I'll switch, you. they do both sides when they're doing these practices as well. Then I'll go on to playing below that line or short of that line after the serve. So now the front player's attacking, drop shots. We're talking about the variation here. And the back player, the receiver, can't hang back anymore, he has to get up there. So that's encouraging good movement. And the movement get round each other around the front because it's more confined when you're attacking. And then both sides of those. And then sometimes I do below or shorter than normally. And then now any shot to conclude this session, you may play any shot. So they're putting into effect the high stuff they've done, the drops, the low, blending it. So they've been through a whole area, starting with the high one that gives them a chance to warm up, use the height, all the time, near the wall, near the wall, near the wall, not hitting the wall, all the time. But then that builds an ability to play straight well, which I think quite a lot of my players have, believe is very good, but that's because they've worked hard at it, isn't it? The club operates like that. We don't, nobody thinks that Lee Beachel done, I don't know does it, how it comes over, but they don't fancy themselves, do they? Well, I use, James is called the marksman, as you may know, and it's because of his ability to keep the ball close to the wall, and not hit the wall, is the best, except Layla's better, but she never hits a side wall ever. So, where, you know, where do they get it from? Why, like most of the players this morning are good, but they'll hit a side wall occasionally, Layla won't. Well, it doesn't hit a side. And I remember a session with James one morning, he didn't hit a side wall once, hitting straight, not the whole morning. And you think, well, that's hours of practice, but they have something else as well, because these other blokes have practiced just as well, but they'll hit a side wall. And so, fundamental, I had 24 Americans recently with Sean Moxham, David Palmer's coach, who's a great guy, Sean, and he brought 24 Americans. And I went through practice they clearly had never seen ever and they, they, you know, Sean soaked it all up and, and will develop it.